Welcome, welcome everybody. Welcome to another episode of the Third Banner Pod. Tonight, you got me as the host, man. Ash ain't here. You got me as the host. We got Kyle, of course, Patrick, and Josh making his triumphant return. It's been a while, Josh. We're so glad to have you tonight, man. It's It's been a long time, and uh, we missed you, brother. We missed you. So Welcome back, sir. Welcome, welcome. back, man. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Yeah, I've been dealing with some personal stuff, but really hoping I have that behind me uh, so I can be a lot more involved now. But it's good to see everybody. That's awesome, man. We, like I said, we, we miss you, man. We, we, I was looking forward to this day when you can come back in and um, that's great news that you're, you know, you're kind of past that and hope to see you around more often. I see we're looking at the chat here. We already got see Desmond's, it, in. Desmond's in. Trent's in. Says Ty, the Jets sign Tyron Smith. I just saw that before we came on. Robert, Good Welco, news. fellas. Waco, Welco. That's what I thought I said Waco at first. I was like, yeah, we hope. <laughs> got JV representing Power 10. He's in here. Power Nick, 10, you guys are doing Power good stuff. Power 10 in the man. house. I haven't been able to join you all in a while, but uh, I'm sure you all been killing it in your spaces. Uh, I listened in the other night. They're doing they're doing good stuff, man. They're doing. I'm good watching stuff. the old sure. Dust Buster. He's in a close one against North Texas right now, but I don't think it's going to matter, guys, because we needed Ohio State to win the night. We did. I think. We did. I think they were going to consider keeping their interim coach. He was six and one. And I think that they were in the lead as far as landing Dusty May. With them probably not making the tournament, Ohio State, that is, I can't imagine that they keep him around. And so I don't know what you guys think of that, but I'm starting to get a little nervous. Starting to get nervous. All I'm hearing about is guys getting extensions, guys we don't want for this reason, for that reason. They jaywalked. They uh, crossed the light when it was turning red. Uh, you know, all kind of reasons we're not looking at guys right now. And then, of course, you've got Scott Drew, which is the one consistent. And you hope you can land them, obviously. And if you do, this is all a moot point. Obviously, if we land Scott Drew, there's no there's no argument to be had that we could have landed anyone better. But boy, it seems like it just seems like it's Scott Drew, and then like I think Dusty's going OSU, and then it's like I hear the shirts and Kelsey and Medveds, and we cannot do that. I'm nervous, guys. Yeah, I talk think we're, to calling him, we're calling him Medved, right? Nico Medved. There you go. Yeah. Nico Med pause for me, man. I mean, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's like you said, Kyle, like you hear pretty consistently about Scott Drew. And then after Scott Drew, it's a mess. Like, it's a mess. I, don't, I, I honestly don't even know what's true and what's not, but it none of it really sounds good. <laughs> right. Like, the best list I've heard, I'm still like, really? Like, it's tough out there, man. Yeah, JV, JV says, Wade is the answer, and uh, EC, Eric Robert, and Curry Hicks, which is the burner account on Twitter, they both shut it down. Well, it's been shut down by everybody. It's it's very unfortunate. I, unless we land a guy like Scott Drew or somebody on the equivalent of a Nate Oates, it won't be Nate Oates. He just got an extension. But I just don't see a whole lot of guys out there. I don't see a whole lot of realistic guys out there. And so I'm feeling the pressure about Will Wade not even getting looked at. And I, I don't care. I like what Eric Crawford does. I like his work. But he clearly has an issue with Wade personally as far as bringing him here. When I say personally, I mean he clearly doesn't want Wade here. And I know what his argument would be. I'm just reporting what – they say, but he always tries to diss Wade's credentials. He never mentions that in the five years he was at LSU, he, his first year was a major rebuild and a successful one for year one of a major rebuild. And another year got canceled due to COVID. So you take those two years out, you got a guy in his mid thirties who had three years basically. And he had a sweet 16 and two, two round of 32s at a bottom feeder SEC school. But Eric Crawford acts like he's just a scrub. And today it was, I think he said something like he's got more level ones than he does 
tournament wins. It's just like, come on, man. And the arguments, well, he wasn't on the court whenever they went to Sweet 16. I don't care. It was his team. It doesn't matter. He could have been sitting on his couch. It was his scheme, his team, his win. Yeah. Anyway, I'm just, I'm just frustrated. I don't know where this is going. I don't know where this search is going, I mean. Well, I kind of, and you guys know this, I kind of brought it up today, but I took about 15 minutes to look at the leaders uh, and current coaches of, of Final Fours, and there are not a ton of guys on the list other than the old heads that aren't moving anywhere um and the reason i bring that up is it's it kind of points to the fact that there, there there's not a other than a drew there's not really a sure thing out there mm -hmm. um which is scary and that's why i think everybody is so nervous about who's that number two guy because every number two guy is going to have some type of red flag, whether it be a show cause or whether it be he's young and he's won, he's been to a final four, but you know, before that he didn't do anything and, and he's had the same roster. I mean, everybody's got some type of flaw probably other than drew. So I think that's why there's some tension uh, in the room of our fan base when you talk about the number two guy. Oh, for sure. Like you, you just hit on the head when it outside of Scott drew every other name that we hear, there's things that you like, you know, there's, there's draws. And then there's also like things that you're like, Oh shit. I just, I don't know. And um, I think that's also kind of been when it comes to like our personal opinions on coaches, I know I I'm just going to say it. I know a lot of us here, weren't huge on Dusty May at the beginning. Some of us still aren't, but for me, he's kind of grown on me just because I look at the other names and I'm like, man, I don't know. I'm weighing the positives and negatives. And um, just through my little like research on Dusty and kind of looking into things and his offense, like he's kind of propelled up my list. But even then I got to, I, I can't, I can't ignore the obvious concerns. Like, you know, I, it, how is he going to translate in recruiting here? Um you go and look back at recruiting at Florida Atlantic, it's Florida Atlantic. So I'm not going to expect top 30 classes or anything, but I mean, they're it's, it's nothing to like shout home. Obviously he's hit on some guys, but they're everybody. Every coach has some, some things that are making us worry. And that's why the big, the big hoopla right now is about who's number two. I think everybody knows that Scott drew is obviously the number one target, but we're all worried about who number two is. And we're all trying to figure it out. And uh, I will say with Ohio State losing today, I think that really does kind of hurt when it comes to the May the May pursuit, you know, if, if May is number two. Yeah, I, um, I just it, it just kind of sucks that a lot of these coaches have had really bad years that normally don't. Mick Cronin's had a really bad year. He may not be he may not be feasible anyway. If the buyout thing, I am i don't know, man. There's some people that really think that that's a legit thing. And I know there's always buyout rumors. There was with Kenny Payne, but there are people that like really, really are hitching their wagon on this whole buyout thing with the loophole. And I guess it's just uh, former bylaw or former cases in California that, pe that previous employees have won versus their employer with similar situations. But – it just sounds like a big headache, but Cronin or Mick, Mick didn't have a good year. He had a bad year. He had a losing year. And so then the next thing you look at is, well, what about Eric Musselman? He was a guy, but no, he's had a really bad year too. He's had a worse year. And so I don't know, guys. It, it, it's just, it's kind of scary. It's almost like we're going to wait until the tournament if we don't get Scott Drew, and then we're going to hope somebody makes a Dusty May type of run, and we just get them. But Boy, that's risky too. It's just there's not. Right. I wish we could hear somebody like like you wish there was a guy like uh, I don't know even McCaslin now at Texas Tech. Pat, I wish he was interested, but it's his first year and he's from Texas. He's he's from that area. He's not leaving. And then yeah. you know there's guys like uh, I don't know. You get guys like T.J. Altsberger who have a monster buyout and he's going to stick around at Iowa State. 
that's a big name. I know Josh is well aware of him, but uh, you know, I don't know. Some people don't like Shaka very much, but he sounds like he'd be a hard pull as well. Um, I just don't know where you go, guys. I just don't know. Yeah, and I think you know, uh, I think we've all kind of touched on that like sense of angst around number two. I think part of that comes from the way that Josh Hurd operates. He seems yeah. to have a lot tighter circle than what previous ADs had. I mean, Jurek, Jurek had his guys, right? Like his inner circle of uh, boosters that he would go to with information. He'd tell and like I 10 think Ty- people and they'd right. all spread and, it. Yeah. Right. And I think Tyra was, you know, the Wild West while he was here, right? Like I think Matt yeah. Jones was getting better info than some of us were. Um, so I, I think that's where that some of that angst is coming from. And I appreciate that he's private about the search, but it's making our lives a little bit more. <laughs> yeah, we're nervous. No, it hell. Is. It we is may all laugh sure. at this episode later. It may just be like, oh, I can't believe we're got nervous. Scott Drew. And yeah. <laughs> Even if it's not yeah, Scott sure. Drew, maybe there's some other, yeah. but I mean, I don't know who it would be. I have no idea. Yep. So, yeah, I think that's, you know, that's kind of what we're all looking for is I think maybe get a little bit better list. I think in the discord, we threw around a few names um, I don't know if you guys are ready to go into those a little bit. Um, I think Let's I got myself it. in some trouble uh, in, the, in the Discord today. Um, so I did some research. You know, I decided I was going to take a self-imposed half day at work and just look through who's out there. Um, so I, I researched this for way too long. And, man, Pat hit it right on the head. There's just not a lot out there. Um, I think at Louisville, we want to hire somebody who has – uh, NCAA success and has already done it then multiple times and not just like Nick put in the chat, you know, a one hit wonder. We don't want a one hit wonder. We shouldn't have that at Louisville, right? Like we should have somebody with sustained success that we know is going to be a top 10 coach. Um, and there's just not a lot of guys out there. So one name I threw out, uh, not to get anybody, you know, super excited was Matt Painter. I know, uh, that's someone everyone would be thrilled with. Right. Um, so I was looking through his numbers and I was kind of yeah. talking myself into it. I don't know if it was the, uh, the last job, option. by the way, if anybody <laughs> thinks that we're saying Matt painters, even interested, we're yes. not, this was yes. just Josh doing homework and looking at the defi- offensive and defensive efficiency and stuff. And yeah, he's really been successful. And, and so he would love to have Matt painter. So we want to make it clear that, that okay. doesn't mean we think Matt, Matt painters coming. All right, two things. First off, Kyle's right. This is totally my opinion. It's not based on any reporting. There's nothing to it. But number two, Matt Painter would not be my ideal number two. (laughs) If I could pick, like, I'd much rather have it be like, you know, Bill Self and Mark Few and all those guys. But unfortunately, that's just not a reality for us right now. So um, when I was looking through realistic number twos, I mean, he made a lot of sense. Uh, You know, his buy. So you look at like financials. He's only getting like 3.6 million, I think, this year. We could double that pretty easily. I mean, mm-hmm. we've heard some numbers from uh, Scott Drew that were like north of 8 million. Um, you know, they they're pretty well researched. I think it was Mike uh, Rutherford who said that. So you'd yeah. like to believe it. Um, so we could do that. We could double his salary easily. His buyout, one million. No coach has a million dollar buyout. I think someone in the Discord said, if you have that low of a buyout, probably means that you're looking to move or you want to be able to move, whether that's the NBA or, you know, to a bigger job. So financials make sense on the court. You know, I think Kyle has very famously painted him as postseason painter uh, in the <laughs> Discord. And I, I mean, sure, there there are some. I don't red think flags I've ever said there. that. <laughs> yeah, right, right, right. Yeah, in the last five minutes, maybe. Uh, but like. <laughs> Um, you know, there's some, there's some truth to that, right? He lost as a one seed, but like he was still one seed, right? Like he's, he lost to a 16, but he still was the top seed in the tournament. Right. Um, yeah. And I, I know, I know. And he's, he's also lost some double digit seeds. Like I I understand all that, but he's also made the tournament every year since 2014 minus 2020 because of COVID. Um, he's been to like five sweet 16s. And I think an elite eight in there as well. Um, I know at Louisville, we don't, I think the famous line is we don't um, celebrate sweet 16s, mm-hmm. but yeah. shit, it'd be nice. Shit, it'd be nice to have one right now. Oh, yeah. like, at this point, sure. I probably would, yeah. but at the For time sure. he said we don't yeah. celebrate. Andy Katz said that in his article. 
at the yeah. time, he was right. At this point, I'd probably go streaking and get arrested for a Sweet Sixteen. Yeah. Not no bad. kidding, no kidding. So the whole point of that, like, I won't, I won't keep going, but painters does, you know, he makes a lot of sense, and uh, I think it's realistic. But again, have not heard his name anywhere. Yeah, I, I, uh, I don't know. Of this group, I might be the only other guy that really likes Painter. Um, <clears throat> He's a guy that you haven't heard his name come up, and it's probably because he really likes Purdue um, and is entrenched there. But when you, like Josh said, when you talk about financials, he's attainable. In that sense, we could definitely offer more NIL than Purdue. Um, you know, his, his buddy Jeff Brom could tell him how much he loves Louisville. Um we could really make Purdue our minor league system if we went and got uh, <laughs> really Matt good. Painter. So it's a good way of putting yeah. it. Um, yeah. But but you know, we talk about tournament success, and I'm going to go back to this again. Does Matt Painter have a Final Four? No, he doesn't. Has he been upset in the tournament? Yes, but he makes the tournament every year. He's made the second weekend a good amount of times. And if, again, if you go through coaches that are available, that are realistic, there are not many guys that make the, that have made the third weekend that are still coaching or aren't Bill Self, Tom Izzo, John Calipari, Rick Pitino. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we're not going to be able to find a guy that has a bunch of final fours and has gone deep into the tournament, you know, four or five times. That's just not going to happen. So you've got to look at these guys like a Matt Painter, who is probably one of the greatest regular season coaches of our generation. I mean, you're talking about countless Big Ten titles. His efficiency numbers are off the charts. I mean, if you looked at Matt Painter, took out the – postseason uh, record and compared him to some of the greats, he would match up. Now, obviously what matters championships and final fours. So Matt Painter needs to break through if he wants to be called, you know, a hall of fame coach, which his regular season resume suggests. Exactly. Um, so, you know, those are guys that I wish we would hear about as a, as a number two, not because I don't like Dusty May, but like the fall off from Drew to May is pretty big. Yeah. And then the fall off from May, some of these other guys we hear is it's a bottom the same. Oh man, it's rough. So it's I'd rough. like to have more guys in between the Drew and the May that you know that way if, if we have to go to our third option, fourth option, it doesn't feel like we're parachuting down the Grand Canyon. Um, so, yeah, I, I like a guy like Painter. That would be awesome if he was interested and if we were interested. I, signs point that we aren't, but those are the type of guys, you know, you I, I think you got to look at for sure. Painter's interesting in the sense, like, I, it's interesting because I think, was it, correct me if I'm wrong, but it was maybe two cycles ago, the max cycle that, I think Jody Dembling said Painter was really interested, like that, really, that yeah, really true. wanted yeah. it. It was and higher Mac, yeah, yeah, and you know that's a few years in the past, but it seems like there was previous interest there. So who knows? Maybe now, maybe now there still is. Um, and it, it's not fair to judge coaches off of like when we when we when we judge and rank coaches amongst our list and stuff. Obviously, there's many different things that we use right like we use tournament success and fit and recruiting and you know and different things like that style of play and it's not fair to just totally dismiss matt painter just off of postseason but at the same time it does it does matter right it does matter and i think a lot of us would just love to see him finally break through to where we could where it would be a no-brainer but right now like i don't i could mm -hmm. see i could see both sides of the argument I can see why people would like him, and I can see why people are scared as hell because he he gets upset by 
fairly Dickinson. Like, it, you know, it just, it's, you need to see him break Thank through. You. you really need to see him break through. Um, and there's no excuse for this Purdue team this year to not make at minimum elite eight, in my opinion. There's no excuse. This team, they shoot the lights out. Edie's a foul merchant. I mean, it, whoever they're playing, their big already has two fouls before the yeah. game even starts. So there's yeah. there's no there's no excuse, none at all. Yeah, and I just I think he's the best current active regular season coach in college basketball. But then you can make a very valid argument he is the worst tournament active tournament coach in college basketball because it's not. I know he made one elite eight in like twenty years, and so people point to that and. I don't know. I mean, he also lost in that lead eight to another coach that typically would choke until that year, and then he's choked ever since. And it just – which I know there's more to the game than the coaches, but you got to have your guys' psyche prepared in that kind of environment, and it just seems like there's some sort of psychological barrier for him because it's not that he's just losing. He is losing to double-digit seeds when he's got a one seed, a two seed. And he's doing it habitually on a regular basis. So that is my criticism. I mean, would I be upset with Matt Painter at this point? Absolutely not. I mean, unless Scott Drew was the other option and we chose Painter over Drew, I would probably not like that. But, I mean, I could also see why you would. I could see the argument for it, which would be that you believe that he's going to break through in the tournament. The, the only – the main issue I have is I don't think Matt Painter's a possibility at all. I don't mm-hmm. – I mean, I've not heard his name. Jody Dimling threw every single coach he could find on his hot list, but you can't mm-hmm. find Matt Painter on there. I think I think we counted. I think he added a couple more to get him to 26 coaches to look at. And, I mean, obviously some of those guys aren't going to be as seriously considered, but – I mean, that's a pretty wide net, and, I mean, Matt Painter wasn't on there. I just have a feeling that he's so entrenched at Purdue that he's not a he's not a realistic option. But, yeah, if you could tell me that a number two option was a guy like Nate Oates who just got an extension, so he's off the table, or Matt Painter who – I don't I'm, Purdue might even be his alma mater. I don't know. I think he's got attachments to Purdue that go beyond mm-hmm. his coaching career, if I remember right. I mean, I could right. I'll have to look up. that up to verify it. I'll look so it up. You, I, I you'd think probably right. be right because he only Don't spent one there. year at Southern Illinois before yeah, he went to Purdue. I know he went, yeah, Southern so, Illinois, I believe you are correct there. He played but at Purdue, yep. In the played 90s. at Purdue. So that's the thing there, too. I know he was strongly considering us at one point, which just seems kind of crazy back then even. But – I don't know, guys. I just, I just don't see all those ties, and he's rooted. I think if here's the thing, though, I don't know if it's over eight million, like like some people have quoted, but um, I know other people have heard six to seven, and then I actually heard yesterday, I had heard seven was was the amount. So we've all heard different things. I'm not gonna sit here and be like, well, what I heard's right, and you guys are all wrong. But even if it's six, if it's if it's six at the bare minimum, which is the lowest number I've heard, and I don't remember who said it was between six and seven, but somebody had one of you guys, I think, had said that. That's what you thought it was. So that being said, even six, it's like can, you've got to be able to get a coach with that much money, a oh, good sure. coach. A good coach. Now, like yeah. Pat had been saying earlier, and I know it's been alluded to, there's not a home run besides a Scott Drew. There's not a guy who just checks every single box. But, man, for that second guy, you can't just jump to Josh Schertz, Pat Kelsey, and Nico Medved. Mm-hmm. It's no offense uh-huh. to those guys. Mm-hmm. But their resumes don't stack up. I mean, Josh Schertz runs an entertaining style of ball, but he lost every big game he played in this year. Every single one of them. I looked down the mm-hmm. – he did beat Drake once, I believe, but he lost to him twice. And I know he lost mm-hmm. – I believe it was Michigan State, and he got killed by Alabama. And other than that, you know, it's, it's admirable what he's done in Indiana State overall. But if you're going to jump from Indiana State to Louisville, you need to have something that, like, blows me away. Like, mm-hmm. like this Indiana State team has to be cut from a different cloth, kind of like how FAU was last year. I mean, if we would have taken Dusty last year, somebody's got a dog in the background. <laughs> uh, if uh, 
if somebody, if somebody took if we if we had an opening last year and took Dusty fresh off a of Final Four without even seeing his product this year, I don't even think many people would be as hesitant as they are now. Some people would be, but yeah. to just to, Josh Shirts doesn't have that bang, and then Pat Kelsey, I feel like he gets in these rock throwing competitions and his type of games, and you know how we all feel about that. I don't know. I haven't seen much of Pat Kelsey. So somebody told me he runs a pack line D, and that really makes me nervous. I'm not a big mm-hmm. – if that's true. Like I said, I've not seen him coach. That's just what I've heard. But that would immediately make me like, oh, the Chris Mack with the pack line D, and he comes from that same type of – I'm pretty sure he comes from the same Mack lineage. Mm-hmm. That's, I don't know, guys. Uh, I think with that much Pat's, money, my point is, with that much money, you got to find a better number two than those guys. I think it, Pat's dog was saying no to Josh Shirts. Is that, is that <laughs> what you're saying, Pat? Yeah, yeah he, accurate. He accurate. says no to a lot of things, so <laughs> no to Pat. I, yeah, hey, Kyle, I gotta agree, man. I Josh Shirts. I'm not gonna lie. It's and it's not fair. To, it's not fair. I'm just gonna go ahead and say this. It's not fair that I'm judging him off that Missouri Valley Championship game. It's not. But my mm-hmm. God, that just it that was the, that was his moment to really kind of put his name really out there and and show that he's he could arrived. be a legitimate candidate and arrived. And they looked like absolute shit for thirty minutes of mm-hmm. that game. And and I, there's no there's no denying that they were terrible for most of that game. They made a run, they made it close, but they couldn't they couldn't guard us for guys i mean seriously they couldn't guard us Mm -hmm. and and the record this year i know they don't get many quad one opportunities but they were one and four quad one losing to drake twice got steamrolled by alabama michigan state and this michigan state team this year is not that good i don't Mm -hmm. that was another thing just randomly michigan state's projected to make the tournament i don't know how they're not that good they're they're (laughs) they're record is no, horrible they're mid they've lost to every good team they played this year so yeah. we'll see i i think the only thing that's going to save indiana state on sunday is their net ranking and if 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 i if indiana state doesn't make the tournament there's no way if no. you're josh Hurd, there's no way you can Absolutely convince the not. fans that that this is the guy you want that's going to be the toughest sell possible and i don't see any way you could do it I think he'd have to even just – he's got to make the tournament, obviously. I think he'd have to make at least a Sweet 16 to even get any fans to really like be like, okay, this this might work. Right. <sighs> even then, well, I mean, and, look how people feel about Dusty May, and he had a Final Four on it. And not to interrupt, a tough sell, man. Not to like interrupt, I'm going to make this quick, but you brought up Dusty. Uh, Florida Atlantic wins yep. 77-71. They're moving on. So, But go ahead, Josh. Go ahead. Go Buckeyes. Oh, awesome. Yeah, <laughs> I was just going to say, I mean, we were talking about it in our Discord. I don't like to root for anyone to fail, but I really – if Indiana State <laughs> just doesn't get in the tournament, we can just totally take shirts off the list. We don't even need to talk about them. We can just move on. So, I, again, I don't like to root against people that way. It's just not in my nature. But I think this is one time where I'm going to have to break that rule and be like a huge, you know, Michigan State and everyone else on the bubble fan uh, there for a couple of days. Yeah, I, I'm just like – and, again, this is why I'm so nervous about these number two guys. But I like to see – at a school like ours, I like to see a coach – that has one with multiple different rosters or at multiple different schools, yeah. um, you know, that has something to point to of some type of consistency with different personnel. And the guys that were listing, even Dusty May, who now I am like, gosh, if I, Please come here. If, if, you <laughs> it's know. a door to face yeah. effect. You hit us yeah. with the really bad names, and then you drop Dusty May after that. Right. And it's like, oh, that doesn't sound so bad now. But you mm-hmm. just have so many guys that have had. I mean, Dusty's had obviously big success with this group in a Final Four. He's going to go back to the tournament. We'll see that. But Dusty, what what can Dusty do with another roster? You know, that, that's a question mark. I mean, Shirts, sure, it's like this is his first really good season ever. And, yes, he's built Indiana State up along the way and got better each year. But this is the first year, like, that you're like, man, this is 
an NIT team, you know, like this is a, you know, bubble NCAA team. Those aren't guys like it. That's the first time that's happened for him. That's yeah. not what we need to be looking at at Louisville. And I know the, I know we've talked about how slim the pool is, but there, there's better people out there that you could get than those guys. And I, and again, there, I think part of it is the not wanting to miss on the next big thing factor. Yes, you don't want to miss on sure to be ends up being the next big thing, but like. Also, and hopefully we're not hiring in five years, but if St. Louis hires Josh Schertz and he does well there and we need a coach in five years, then maybe that's the time you go after him, you know. Um, so that's just the, the the pool that I'm hearing. It's like I wish there was more guys with sustained success over, over multiple rosters. Like you look at a guy like McCaslin who's not, you know, not – on our radar, but like when he was hired at Texas tech, which is a step below us, he had won at multiple programs with multiple different personnel. And that's, if I'm going the mid major route, that's what I want to see. And I guess some of these guys have been at their schools longer, but not, not a lot of them have, you know, multiple NCAA tournament trips and wins and stuff like that. So it's just, uh, it, it, it scares me, man. It scares me. I know Barry know. says a ton of people are thinking or we're getting made from what he's seen. I see. I'm here in Ohio State from everybody. I mean, I don't know. Mm. I mean, I guess it could all be a smokescreen or agent maneuvering to get to Louisville and maybe get us off from. I don't know, but if I, if I put a gun to my head and make me choose, I'm picking Ohio State. I just I think there's so much smoke out there about Dusty going Ohio State, but we'll see. I mean, I wouldn't at this point. I would not mind if we got him if we can't get Scott Drew. Well, I, I don't like the other names. Before we came on, I was kind of like researching that, and there was a. I'd have to go back and look up the tweet, but it's from someone who's like the, um, what do you call it? Like the beat writer for the Columbus Dispatch. Yeah, for Ohio State basketball, and he's saying that it's down to Diebler at Bay. So that's why I think a lot of us were kind of hoping that Ohio State would keep winning. Yeah, to keep to keep making that as awkward and long drawn out as possible. Yeah, I and think they make the tournament with a to win give tonight us, to give us time to you know hear from Drew. But I was going to say, um, I'll admit I'm not I'm not big on listening to the radio, but the, today I was listening to the drive with Mark Ennis. And by the way, I've, I've listened a few times now. I know Mark kind of tunes into us every once in a while. I, every time I listen to Mark talk about not only Kenny Payne and the search and all that, like I feel like I'm going to church, man. He's killing it. He's crushing it. I, like he's 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 doing a great job. And he mentioned today with shirts that exactly like you said, Pat. You want to see him do it somewhere else a little yes. a little higher up and he mentioned like i would have loved to have seen him at vandy that would have been perfect if like if, yeah. that would have been perfect for him it sounds like they're actually gonna hire chris mack but st louis he, is looking at him is i know st well i i mean i think vandy's gonna hire chris mack i know st right. louis is looking at shirts um if that, he crossed St. Be, Louis, I'd feel better. Right. I would yeah, I would feel better definitely. too, but I feel like Vandu would be just been an awesome spot for him to finally get that P5 job. Yeah. It's like entry level P5, right? P mm -hmm. Or power six in basketball. But yeah, that's what that's something that I, I listening to the drive today, I was like, damn, that that's actually perfect. That makes sense. I'll and I and guy, I agree. I'll tell you a guy I wish we could get is, is Shaheen Holloway, but he's another one, second year at Seton Hall, and that's his alma mater. So yep. it just seems like anymore you're getting these guys that are rooted, and uh, the only person I've heard that's rooted to Louisville, at least semi-rooted, or at least has some roots in the area, is one Mick Cronin. So I know how everybody feels about that. I just wish there was a guy out there crushing it. It's like, he's from Louisville. Now, it could be Shrewsbury in, in a couple of years, but, he, you know, He's got a huge rebuild at Notre Dame, and he's in year one, so he's not enough. It just seems like the timing's off with this, and maybe we're completely yeah. wrong, guys. Maybe like we come on, maybe we look at this episode two or three weeks from now, we laugh our asses off at how much we were worried, I guess. 
But when you don't hear a lot and the names keep coming up, like Pat Kelsey, Nico Medved, and Josh Schertz, and then mm-hmm. Mick Cronin, and, and, and which Mick, Mick Cronin's above them. Let me be honest. Like if you if you have those four guys, Medved, Schertz, uh, Pat, Pat Kelsey, and then Mick Cronin. I mean, I'm I'm taking Mick. Mm-hmm. Uh, despite all the, I know I know how everybody feels, and I and I agree with a lot of you, but. Yeah, I don't know, yeah. guys. I just don't see a whole lot going on. Like, I just don't see a whole lot of people. Like, like I said, Shaheen Holloway. I would love to have Shaheen Holloway. He's young. He runs a matchup zone like Rick Patino did, and he runs a better offensive system, in my opinion. He's still trying yeah. to get it together. NIL has been a hell of a struggle at Seton Hall, from my understanding. So that might be the one area. And that's another thing. Maybe you can convince one of these guys – who thinks their NIL program kind of sucks, maybe they would otherwise be attached to mm. their program, but they're sick and tired of not having the resources of a Louisville. Maybe maybe yeah. we get them. And the people saying, Will Wade, I'm with you 100%, and I'm thinking we're going to regret not getting Will Wade. But Me too. it doesn't sound mm. like – I don't know. It sounds, sounds like there's a, a push to get it out there that he's not even gonna, going to be considered like a, a almost like – a push against the the grass or the the grass swelling that's the ground swelling. Sorry, the ground swell movement that's going on to get Will Wade here. It seems like there's a big push against that. Mm. It, yeah, it's, yeah. Um, yeah yes. it's, uh, I think right. we could do a whole episode on on Will Wade, man. It's uh, it still might. Yeah. <laughs> I might no. do a side episode. I'm, I'm, I'm tossing that no. idea around. But yeah, I, I, it, it's like I, I'm trying to think of an analogy, and I, I can't think of one right now. But like the the constant like Will Wade. I mean, the fan base. There's a lot of people in the fan base that want Will Wade, and every corner you go to that wants it, there's a Crawford there saying, "Forget him. It's not going to happen." There's a yeah. Jody Dimling that's like, "We're not hiring Will Wade," and Jody. They didn't say that. I'm just saying Somebody on his media level. people that 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 every walk of the way are saying, no, stop talking about Will Wade. So unless it's of some big smoke screen, it sounds like they want to nip it in the bud, um, which stinks. But how could you possibly is. rationalize hiring somebody out of those three names I've mentioned? Shirts, Medved and Kelsey over Will Wade. Oh. Even with the show calls, I mean, how? I understand I making a hire like that, but I we we we've heard all the arguments, and and you know, y'all know my argument is that he just doesn't, uh, you know, the issues that he got in trouble for are not applicable now. So I don't care is the best way to put it. So mm-hmm. that's the counter argument. But even if you're going to argue, well, it still matters. Well, then you still got to pick somebody as good as Will Wade or better. That's my yeah. stipulation, and it has to be obvious. Yeah, for sure. Well, and I think, you know, um, I can't remember who put it in the chat. Yeah, Danny 16, he was our age, go cards. Yeah, maybe it was Danny, I think. But let's let's try and talk through some names that have maybe some realistic options is number, number two, right? So we've talked quite a bit, I think, about how there's not really a good option, but we're, we kind of are where we are. Like the landscape is what it is and we got to make the best out of it. So, you know, I mentioned Matt Painter. Who are some other guys that y'all think are realistic options? I think we've heard Will Wade. We've seen Shaka in the chat. Um, so oh, what do you guys think? Please. Oh, please. Oh. Hey, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm always the guy Simon, on these, man. on these polarizing names that someone brings them up. Someone's like, I hate them. And I'm like the guy like Shaka. I'd be totally fine with Shaka. Uh, we'd be so entertaining to watch, man. He, man. He's he's still extremely young. Yeah. Yes, it's been it's been forever since he's had a deep tournament run. But, I was in high school the last time Shaka made it out the first weekend. By the way, but but we're again, talking about Matt Painter, and he has as many Final Fours as I have, and he's coached over six hundred games. Yeah, but again, Kyle, there's not many people with Final Fours out there. Right. Yeah, I can't exactly. make it. Shaka Smart has course. one. Um, Thirteen years. Listen, ago. I'm trying to go to bat for Shaka, and you're making me mad by hating <laughs> on pain. I'm talking to Ty. Um, you just have to 
plug your ears, I guess. <laughs> um, but no, you've got a guy who has a fun style, uh, has done well in the regular season, especially at BCU and, and now Marquette. And, and he had some good years regular season wise at Texas. Um, Kyle will go more into if he wants to talk about Shaka, why he discredits the Texas years. But, I mean, Shaka Smart is a guy that you would want as a number two, number three guy. Um, are there guys I'd prefer? Yeah, I'd prefer Will Wade. Um, but there's not – he's definitely preferred some of these guys. And to me, he's preferable over May. So – you know, somebody like him, yeah, I would definitely support him as a number two, number three option. Larry, I don't um, think Tang's an option anymore, wh- whether we like that or not. Uh, it, it sounds like everybody across, unless that's another smokescreen, I guess it could be. We don't really know. No, but everybody not. seems to have a collective idea now that Tang is not an option. Which I, which is sad for me because I'm a big Tang guy. And Anias, I know you said we open up the link tonight. So that is the plan. We're probably going to like, we're only going to do this for a few more minutes. I think I'm going to say something Josh is and we'll kind of, we'll kind of move on, but we are going to open it up a little bit here later just for a few callers and all good stuff. But here's my thing about Shaka. We, we've done this a million times. I'm just going to say, I'm just going to say it. Um, his style of play is awesome. I'm not going to deny that. It's great. It, it reminds you of like some real old school Rick Patino, like, the Havoc style is awesome. I'm not going to deny that. Um, but we've talked about like tournament success with a lot of these guys. And the last time Shaka Smart had any tournament success, I was in junior junior year economics class. Mm-hmm. He has done absolutely nothing in the tournament since that one Final Four run. I'm going to give him credit for it. I'm not going to knock him at all like it's 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 a huge huge accomplishment to make a final four but outside of that he has done nothing and i'm not even like i'm not even bringing up the texas years um but when it comes to that i can't i can't just ignore it but again i'm not like bringing that up as that's why i think he's a failure because even at VCU after the Final Four, and again everyone's just say like, VCU, it's VCU. There's they're a good mid major, they're a good mid major program. They couldn't do anything after that either. He's done nothing yet at Marquette. He's got a good team this year. We'll see how it goes, but he has to make it out of the first weekend before I can be like, you know what? Okay, I'll listen. I'll give because I'll outside give you of one hey, run, he I'll has give you this year. nothing. I will give you this year if he doesn't do it. If he doesn't at least make it the second weekend this year then I'm going to be out on them. But I hear a lot of people and I've tried to, uh, I've tried to make this point and I'm not even talking about people on here, but a lot of people, I don't think they watched either. They didn't watch them at VCU. They didn't watch them at Texas or they haven't watched them at Marquette or they just haven't watched them at all because I'm going to tell you what he did. He ran a Rick Pitino type of havoc offense and defense at VCU. Right. Then he ran a Chris Mack offense and defense at Texas. I don't know why. I think he felt like he had to recruit a certain type of player to appease people. And if he didn't, and they wouldn't run that system he liked to run at a higher rated level, he had to go exchange recruiting a certain type of player to appease fans over what he naturally was good at. Or maybe he just thought he could revamp and like reinvent the wheel. I don't know why he went away from what worked, but those years at Texas, pop in an old Texas. Well, I say pop in like I'm a freaking boomer. Uh, pop in, <laughs> pop in a cassette. Uh, no, seriously, like go go on YouTube and try to find old Texas highlights under Shaga Smart. You'll probably fall asleep, man. There won't be very many, Kyle. You'll <laughs> fall how, asleep. How, but then, like you like you watch him at Marquette. It's a different coach, and he's not going to go back to that. If he comes to Louisville, he's going to bring that havoc system. And but I do agree with this. I will agree that he needs to do something this year because he underwhelmed last year and he had a team to do it last year. He had a team to make a run and he did not. So I don't discount that. 
I just count as Texas years because you may well have called him shock a dumb. I don't know why the hell he but, went but, to that. Here's system. my here's my one thing about that. Your point about shock the recruiting part at Texas. <laughs> he recruited for that style. And I'm not talking the slow style that you're talking about. He recruited for the Havoc style. Then, then I, a lot not, of those guys were super long, athletic, fast, quick, at, like – they were really good athletes. He recruited for that. But so, my other point was maybe he was just trying to reinvent his system, reinvent the wheel, and I, thought he had something. Either way, he messed up. But he, yeah, I won't hold that against him if he moves back to his old system. And, and I mean, he's killing it at Marquette, other than underachieving last is year. Is he really killing it? I mean, yes. yes. Turn, he's, he has. He's had a good season. He's had a good year. In the regular season, he's been killing. Oh God, he's top but, ten. Like, say that's pretty good. <laughs> but he <laughs> needs to this year in the tournament. He needs to do something. I agree there because he he really kind of crapped the bed last year with his system in place. So, yeah, yeah, like he does every year except no. for one year. So, like he so does every I'm year. Not, so, you guys really right. expected him to go to four Final Fours at I'm not expecting that. 30s? I'm not. I'm but not. But then you Kyle, argue that Will Wade? No, I mean, no. I mean, he should have at least been another Sweet 16 in there, right? Like he hasn't yes. even made a Sweet 16 since 2012. Like if you take not that one. out. He was, shouldn't be a candidate. Yeah, and most of those years were at Texas when he ran a stupid system. I don't know. He doesn't run it right, so anymore. Let me ask you this, Ty, and I, yeah. I guess Josh, too. Yeah. Because you guys yeah. don't like Shaka Smart. Yes. Which I like Shaka. He, he'd be behind guys, but I like Shaka. But does the fact that Shaka Smart had some early success at VCU, which was a program that before he got there, did not have any success to my Final knowledge. Fours always matter to me. I mean, they, they um, were good, but they weren't Final Four good, right? Like, I'll give you that. Right. No, I'm talking about before he got there. They, they, uh, where, what was the farthest they ever we're went? Will Wade make Final Four within five years. I can years. look it up, but VCU um, is not a scrub program. Flip this. But, will Wade will make a Final Four within yeah. five years. Go ahead. Sorry. Um, I'm talking to but, the chat. A young guy who went to a mid-major program, got him to a Final Four pretty early, and then, you know, actually was decent in a, in a couple years after that at VCU and then went on to Texas and failed. Does that give you pause about a Dusty May who has a very similar first few years of his career? You know, it... it, it if Shaka's the way Shaka's career has developed is something that you view as as horrible, then you've got to be a little bit scared of of a Dusty May who has a very similar resume early in his career. Actually, his is worse. Oh, well, yeah. go ahead, Sorry, Josh. I'll, I'll let you go. No, okay. go ahead. Go. Okay, yeah. Well, I just wanted to address two things. So first, I I don't hate Shaka. I just think he should be like number six. <laughs> on the list, right? Like make oh, Dusty yes. May say number no, 16. Make number say 16. No. Yeah, number like make, make them all say no first. So he's who not. Who, who, I, I want to hear the five coaches saying no before Shaka. Hey, uh, I, I, I could probably name 10 if you want to. <laughs> oh, come on. <laughs> yeah. no. so, hey, I, I'm just <laughs> saying. I'm just coach. saying. You take, you take a final four from 2012, which I, I mentioned this in the Discord. Aaron Donald who had an unbelievable NFL career, actually started in the NFL and has now retired and played a Hall of Fame career since Shaka Smart made a Final Four. So how relevant is that Final Four? Not that relevant. Meanwhile, Josh pushes Matt Painter, who has coached 600-something games at Purdue and has the same amount of Final Fours as me. Hey, but guess what? He's also made five Sweet Sixteens. Five. How many is Shocker made? And he can and the last celebrate. Time Shaka yeah, well, they don't celebrate Sweet 16s. I mean, that's great to start out. Hey, when I would celebrate. Situation. You said yourself you'd be butt naked celebrating the Sweet 16. Yeah, for you did say that at the beginning. Even yeah. in the country, you'd be celebrating your I ass. Think the off. word was, if, I'll if be Matt arrested. Painter came here as long as he's been at Purdue and made five Sweet 16s as a with a bunch of one seeds and two seeds and three seeds, and that's the furthest he got except for one fluke Elite Eight and nothing else. No, eventually that 
I'm talking about it first. I probably would. I probably have no pants on if we were going to the Sweet 16 right now. I'd be doing this pod without pants on, and you never know. I may be anyway. I'm you might be. Yeah, I'm say, don't, but anyway, don't, I'm I just saying, like, in the amount of time Matt Fainer's been at Purdue, no, I would not be very happy with the amount. Now, in the regular season, he's arguably the best coach in the Shock country. Shock is actually better in the regular season, percentage-wise. Shock is 172%. Painter's 168. Painter's actually been better in the postseason. Than than uh, Shaka yeah, except has. He doesn't so, ever so make he's a postseason painter. What Shaka? He's not there, right? Sensational like, Shaka he's made a final four in the 30s. Right? He's going to make one this year, or he's going to at least make the lead eight. He's going to make an hey, elite eight this hey, year. You know what? Book you it. know how we're sweating? We're sweating this coaching hire. You know Book what? Well, he's Shaka smart. Sweat? Elite eight, baby. You know what? Matt you heard Painter it here first on Third Banner Pod. Hey, you know you know what? Matt Painter does not sweat Selection Sunday because he always makes the tournament. He's made every tournament since 20. Uh, no, he just waits till he's playing a 15 seed and he starts sweating. His palms are sweaty, knees hey, weak, arms hey. are heavy. Shaka hey, Connor's won't play. not Shaka on the night. Purdue has to wear black jerseys in the tournament fun. because they got mom spaghetti all over them. You don't want to see it. They would try to have hey. it blend in. They try to hide it because they're nervous. Hey. I, I, I would. I, I don't know how you could look at those two resumes and have uh, Shaka above Painter, but hey, it's vibes. It's his offense. It's. I'm going to ignore half of Jaka his Jaka is career. seven years younger than Matt Listen, Painter. Yeah. In okay. seven years, he will make another Final Four. Let's, let's, just, have two let's, more just, let's just do this. Matt okay. Painter. All two right, more. we get it. We get it. Let's we'll do see. this. We'll see. The thing about Shaka is, I think, what Josh, you just said. People get enamored with the style, which I'm going to say is it is a fun, it entertaining. Is. That matters. It's exactly how I would want my team to play. It, it matters. Lose, at least look good doing it. But hey, there's a hey, but another thing, Kyle. You just said it. He loses. Yeah, exactly. He loses. Every, year. Doing it. every year, every year, every year he loses. Matt so Painter why do we keep hyping him up? Thirteen center against a bunch of garden gnomes at Farley Dickinson or St. Peter's, and like, but we're gonna and it looks ugly. At least Shaka looks good when he does it. He's seven years younger, yeah, and look, I'm all for it, man. Shock, All right, hey, here's the, the here's what we got to hope for. Are we gonna bring? We got to hope for a shock <laughs> smart versus Matt Painter national oh, championship. Yes, tournament. let's do it. Let's oh, do it. <laughs> His boring style don't win the tournament. Imagine, if that happens, imagine. we are gonna have Ty on one side and Kyle on the other side in a no. two person. Even the chance that boring style is better than good looking style that doesn't win. Well, Shaka actually, Josh made the point. Shaka wins more games than Matt Painter, and he has a Final Four. You know what? A better, In like a, a better, conference. a better scenario, Pat would be uh, a Matt Painter versus Shaka Smart Sweet Sixteen. Unfortunately, neither of them knows what that looks like. So, yeah, that's probably not going to happen. One uh, of them's going to choke. Yeah. I hope it's, I hope it's yeah. postseason Painter. But anyways, Painter's been there five times, so he knows. Ma- he Painter has been there right. In like eighty years, that's fine. Same, 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 same time frame as Shaka. Same, same with Shaka. Seven years I, younger. I just look. I I can't get behind Shaka. I just can't. Now, if he if he uh, makes it out the first weekend this weekend, I'll I'll listen. But mm-hmm. I can't just ignore all. Oh, of that. he's, he's and, and I and I and I understand the style thing. I get it. Um, I just can't ignore it. He's making but, out that first weekend unless his guys get hurt. How's Cole? How's Tyler Cole? Is he finally healthy? Well, you said that last year, and they didn't make it out of the first year. I did not say it last year. I'm not guarantee anything. I just said that I liked Shaka. I did not. Go find it. I did not say that. I did I mean, say it this year. Obviously. Anyways. Anyways. Yep. I, so so let's I so like move on from those two. We like the I, I think we can agree to disagree on Shaka and uh, Painter. They're both on the list. Where they're at on the list, I don't know. By but the way, if anybody like, doesn't know, we do this all day, every day in the group it's, chat. This it's nothing but do. friendly banter. This is, That's friendly. All it is. this is not. This is like this is it's, every single day. This is just another day. It's friendly yeah. banter amongst four dudes. Another been doing romantic this for two argument years now, at so. the third <laughs> barber shop. Yeah, I mean, that, banter. Is, that is. That's what it is. Hundred percent. So, Kyle, you have another name that you really like outside of Shaka and Painter uh, and Wade. Right. Um, I don't know as much about him. Um, Who, I, I just, we talked about so many people. I don't even know who you're talking about right now. <laughs> yeah. Will Way. Oh, Will Way. Yeah. We, I'd see, I assumed it because we brought him up earlier, but 
yeah, yeah. No, I mean, yeah, I've, I've talked about them so, so many episodes now. I mean, everybody knows how I feel. People in the social media platforms are like, you, you should be Wade's agent. And, but there's other people that are like, you know what? I wasn't sold, but you sold me. So I don't know. Maybe I should be Will Wade's agent. I do like that. I get a lot of strong ass offers I for them. I think that's one. I, I, well, I don't know as much how Josh feels about this, but Will Wade's a guy I think we all agree that we would love to see here. Yeah. Um, yeah. See, we, I mean, that's listen, the thing. Man, if we all agree, you got to do it, Josh, if you don't get Scott Drew, because we never yeah. agree. Yeah. I don't see. I guess I, what is the negative of hiring Will Wade? I, I know there's a, a paid a girl a, sh- and a show cause, but what like what does that do to us as a university? You know, I it's not because to me it's not gonna affect our roster, you know, which is what it's in that that's what it's supposed to do. But I it's agree, not, Josh. With yeah. with NIL, we, we don't need him out there on the road recruiting. It's not gonna affect our roster. We'll still be able to get dudes so the only reason you wouldn't hire him is one, you don't think he's a good enough coach, which I, I don't believe. I think Josh Hurd's a smart man. I don't believe he thinks that. Or two, you think it's going to shine a negative light on the university. And I say, one, maybe for two seconds. And two, who cares? Who cares? Because if Will Wade does what I think people think he can do, about halfway through that first season, yeah, nobody's going to be talking okay, about you, Bell, who's been in trouble in the past, hired a guy who got in trouble too. They're going to be talking about, wow, this U of L team might be a three or four seed. They could make some noise this year. Nobody's going to give two rats asses <laughs> that we hired two Will Wade. <laughs> I've not heard the phrase used. I thought it was going to be two shits instead of eight. Well, I didn't want, I, You're not going to give two of them. They might give one shit, rat. They so might I, give a rat ass. Ass. They won't give two rats asses. What about three? Do they give three? I was going to say two shits, and I thought ass was better than shit. <laughs> well, the username checks out. So anyway, <laughs> um, Will Wade is the, is the Lane Kiffin of college basketball, in my opinion. If there's, I, a, I if there's, if there's a comp. Yeah. And I'd love – I mean, we I love having Jeff Brom, don't get me wrong, but are there many coaches that, that are better than Lane Kiffin right now that, that are at least more, that combination of entertaining, fiery, recruit, recruiting, and he's got a bit of a tainted past. But you know what? Ole Miss seems <laughs> – Ole Miss, I mean, they're like, you know what? We got – this is a business. And, you yeah. know, if you get in trouble while you're at our school, we can get rid of you then. And I yeah. know that's not – that's not uh that's not what anybody wants to do. So don't get me wrong. I understand the argument, like, well, what if he gets in trouble here? Then we're in big trouble. Okay, how much trouble did Kenny Payne get in while he was here as a coach? How much NCAA trouble did he get in? And what did that get us? Mm-hmm. It got us 12 wins and what 51 losses? 52? Come on, man. Like, I'm not yeah. saying there's not a middle ground. I'm just saying, like. I guess my argument is like you can say, well, we don't want to take these risks because you never know we could get in trouble. But you got to hire the most successful guy you can. And if if they come with some risk, if they're minor, which in my opinion they are very minor, uh, then you put parameters in place. And, and that's all I'm going to say about it. Yep. Well, and I was just going to say, I think, you know, when you look at a coaching hire, usually you look at qualitative items and it's hard to really put quantitative factors on a coach or coaching hire. But some of the things I look at are financials. Are we going to be able to pay his buyout? Are we going to be able to afford him? Do we still have budget for NIL? I look at sustained success. Um, and then personality does matter. I know Matt Painter, it's funny. I make that argument and then talk, talk about personality. Um <laughs> But personality does matter. And I think Will Wade would hit all three of those. Oh, so I know you named like five things. He did yeah. them all. Yeah. And I think we, you know, we've belabored this point. We've gone through some of the names. Um, I don't want to drag it out, but I just was going to say, I think after looking through a large number of coaches and using all those metrics, I think Will Wade fits it about as well as anyone outside yes. of Scott Drew. He does. Unless you're getting yeah. Scott Drew. 
I mean, hey, I'd take shoot your shot, Scarlett Johansson. That means she's gonna date you. Well, Will Will Wade <laughs> Will Wade's done exactly what I brought up this past hour. He he's won with different rosters at multiple places. He was successful at VCU. He was successful at LSU. He's now successful at McNeese State. And the man is not much older than I am. So he's still got room. Share the link so people can join us. Yeah, I'm copying that over now. So what we're going to do now, we're going to kind of wrap up. All right, Kyle's posting it. All right, perfect. So we're just kind of wrapping up that segment. So at this point, we're just going to start taking some callers. If you want to call in, I know uh, Anais, you were with us earlier. You were talking about that. So we'll open it up. We'll let you talk. Uh, come in. Say what you want to say. Uh, okay, then Trent, we have Trent with uh, $2 Super Oh, I keep clicking at the same time as you. Uh, two, Trent with the $2 Super Chat says, thoughts on Tom Crean? Um <laughs> Yeah. We appreciate the two dollars, Trent. <laughs> we appreciate the two dollars, Trent. That's yeah. our thoughts. Um, it's about how much I'm putting towards the circle. <laughs> He's our next coach. Is uh, is 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 he mentioned with the St. Louis job? He's mentioned with some job. I think I, I Michigan I Vanderbilt. I Michigan. I think I heard Michigan. That. Jesus. Yes. Yeah. Wait, Michigan. what? Michigan, Michigan is not right? hiring. Tom no. Well, I don't. I, I don't know if people insane. were joking on Twitter when they said it. They probably there were multiple tweets about Tom Cream no in Michigan. No freaking way. Man. And, uh, no freaking yeah. way. Hey, Tom Cream. I, is going I'm just to what I saw. Okay. <laughs> That's got to no be a troll shot. account. It's yeah. probably coaching changes, man. Have you seen the stuff that oh, they've been dude. tweeting? And then they have multiple people on there, so they argue with themselves. Like, they'll quote their own tweet and cuss their own account out. Mm. It's like multiple personality disorder <laughs> on one Twitter account. And but, that and that Twitter account blocked me. I don't know what the hell I did to them, but they blocked a me. A lot of people reason. said that. They're like, I've never talked to this account. I've never blocked. interacted with them once. Here. They blocked me. But um, I like your we, name. I guess. So we have Anias that's here in the waiting room. Now, before we bring Anias in, I want to bring something up real quick. We're going to tease it. We'll talk about it more a little bit later. But um, we've decided that we're going to host our first annual bracket challenge. So we're going to be doing it through ESPN. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and post the link here so you guys can join. Hopefully that goes through. We'll is. tweet it out and stuff too. Like we're also going to we're going to tweet it out. We might even put a Facebook post out, but um, it's going to be through ESPN. You can join. The password to join is TTBP, as in the Third Banner Pod. So whenever you click the link, um, it'll ask for the password. You put that in. Subscribers only. Join. Uh, so yes, that's what I was going to mention. The only way you can win, which we're going to give a gift fifty dollar gift card, I believe, to first place. And then second place, I think a twenty-five dollar gift card. The and the way you can I'll win is ten dollars for third place too. Okay, we'll do ten dollars. Trent, for third. if you win, I will give you two dollars back for Tom. Yeah, there, you there you go. There you go. <laughs> but you must be listen. You must be subscribed to the YouTube channel to claim your winnings. Okay, that's the that's the one caveat. We're pushing for a, a thousand subs. Um, so you got to be subscribed if you want to, you can participate in it regardless, but if you want to claim your winnings, you got to be subbed. So, um, we're going to tweet that out again. We'll post the link everywhere, but you're free to join again. Use code TTBP to join the group. And so now we have Anias. Let's bring in Anias. Been waiting patiently. Anias, what's going on, man? Hello, you guys. How you guys doing tonight? What's up, man? Awesome, we're doing man. good. <laughs> We got the Baylor and Iowa State game playing up here. See so with you know maybe Scott Drew's getting ready to maybe break some of it the Louisville. Has it started yet? Um, it's it's yeah it's going. Oh. Um, well, I first want to start off with um obviously the name that everybody's talking about is Scott Drew. Of course, I mean if I mean I love that Josh Hurd is putting you know everything on the table for him nil salary. However, I mean if you can get the guy to come to Louisville, you do it. Um. But my second option right now is Dusty May. Now, let me break it down to you why I would say the reason Dusty May is my second favorite candidate is because, you know, I've watched coaching clinics. I've watched, you know, I've actually watched some tape. I've watched his, you know, sideline out of bounds plays. I've watched his baseline out of bounds plays. I've watched his transition offense, transition defense, half court stuff. I've watched all of it. The guy knows his X's and O's, and I really, really love that because I feel 
feel like that's really one thing was missing these past couple of years is just the attention to detail. You know, he has the mm -hmm. attention to detail, and that's really one thing that I really, really like about him. I think I about four of his press conferences, just how he talks to the media. That's, I just want to see how, how do you talk to the media? How do you, you know, in, interact mm -hmm. with your fan base and, and, and the media? He does very well. He, he knows what he's talking about. He, he speaks well. He even cracks a few jokes into, like Jeff Brown. Jeff Brown cracked jokes into, in the press conference, and everybody seems to laugh. So, I mean, I mean, it's just the little things like that, because I like how Josh Hurd pointed out. He said that, um, you know, it's more than just coaching basketball at Louisville. I mean, it's more than just winning games, winning championships. Of course, that's what, we, that's what we're about, that's what we want to do. But you have to know how to, to be, you know, connected in the community. You know, you have to be able mm -hmm. to know you know, with the fan base and the media and everything like that. So I want to start off there. I feel like Dusty May is definitely my second option right now. Um, he's young. I understand. I mean, he's brought FAU from the ground up. I understand he's only made one Final Four, but I feel like if he gets in, which I think he will, I mean, they actually just sweated out a win. I just watched that last game. They yeah. sweated out a win, and I and it actually caught my eye because I want to see how you perform through adversity. I felt like, you know, it was a tight game. I want to see how you can, you know, you know, you know, fight through adversity, and I felt like you know they did a, they did a pretty good job. Now he's not working with a lot of FAU. I mean, he's not working with none, nothing at all. I mean, the only thing nice there is their weather. Let's just be honest. You know what I'm saying? So I feel like if he comes to a bigger job, hopefully it's Louisville or Ohio State, he'll be able to get that NIL. He'll be able to get the players he wants, and hopefully he will know that you know I'm pretty sure every coach has a weakness. So I'm hoping that you know he can build out a staff to you know. Um, you know, work around what his weaknesses are because I'm pretty sure his strengths I can already tell is really just the communication, the teaching aspect of it, but also his X's and O's. Um, his X's and O's are, are brilliant. I mean, it's really, really is brilliant. I mean, he's only 47 years old. Um, I remember Josh Hurd saying he wants somebody that could be here 20, 25 years. You know, I want, he wants some stability, and I feel like that's one thing that we've been missing since Rick Pitino is stability. I feel like he would bring that. So that's the one thing. Now, as far as I mean, I heard you guys bantering about I mean, friendly bantering about Matt Painter and and Shaka Smart and um, this is where Mick Cronin is kind of going to come into the equation, but not really. Just if you can just follow me. So I know people are very you know prickly on Mick Cronin. Um, he has the ties to Louisville. Do I think he would do well here? Yes. Is he one of my top five options? No, by any by no means is he not. He's not one of my top options at all. But just to say, you know, I've read through Twitter. I've you know. Been on, you know, Mark Anderson's show. I mean, not Mark Anderson's show. I was on um, one of the shows this morning, and I was talking to those guys, and I was just telling them how, um, you know, every coach has has um, a different way to succeed. If you look at it, it took 20 years for John Calipari to win his first championship in 2012 and Anthony Davis, of course, as we know. Um, I'm not comparing Mick Cronin to Roy Williams, but it took Roy Williams 18 years to win his first championship, right? Mick Cronin is in his 20th season coaching. Rick Pitino, for example, I think he's 74 years old, if I'm if I'm not wrong. Um, he only has one championship, of course. He only has one championship. So, of course, I'm not really looking at what he did at Cincinnati and Murray State because it's a totally different job from UCLA. UCLA is more of a pro town, of course. I feel like they're struggling with NIL a little bit, and I feel like coming to Louisville would be better resources for him, better NIL to work with, but also – like I said, it's a pro. It's a pro city. I mean, you got the Lakers, the Dodgers. I can go on and on. And Louisville, it's a, I mean, Kentucky, especially. It's a it's a basketball state. You know, when you're you know, it's a basketball state. And and I feel like Josh Hurd and obviously as he said, Louisville's men's basketball is the lifeblood of our city and of our program. You know what I'm saying? So I feel like every resource is going to be on the table for Mick Cronin to succeed. Um, and then they say, you know, the Final Four run was fluky. I mean, well, John Calipari. In 2014, made a Final Four as the eight seed, and that was the lowest eight seed to make the Final Four that year. So, I mean, and, and Jack Suggs hit a half-court buzzer beater shot against UCLA. If it wasn't for that, they'd be in the national championship game. So, I mean, it's just so many angles you can take at it. Um, I actually – don't be mad at me, Ty, but I actually agree with Cal on this one. Shaka Smart, he's only 41. I mean, I understand he's only made one Final Four, but – He's 46. He's 46, I mean, 46 yeah, he's young, young. 46, I'm sorry. I got That's that. Will, very is, young. Is it, is it Will Wade? Is it Will Wade that's closer to 41? Yeah, Will Wade's okay. 41. Yeah. Okay, correct. then my bad. No, my apologies. Um, Shaka yeah, Smart's only 46. Like I said, I mean, like I said, it took John Calipari 20 years to just win one championship. So basically, my point being is Shaka Smart, yes, he's only been to a Final Four one time, but to say in, you know, 10, 
five, you know, five, ten plus years, I mean, he could turn that one Final Four into four Final Fours and, a, a, you know, in an Elite Eight and maybe a national champion. You just never know how a, a coach is going to end their career or on the back end of the career. You know what I'm saying? You just never know. So, I mean, I can understand the, the tournament success and um, everything of that nature, but I just feel like, you know, we can't um, – we can't be like, we just can't basically say, oh, well, I mean, this, because I, like I said, like, like I said, I mean, his, I mean Shaka Smart's play style is very, I don't know if y'all saw the last play of what he did last night. Yes. Oh, yes. And God. I meant to bring it. Was, go ahead and bring that up because I forgot to. <laughs> that was did, an impressive I, play. I'll, it I'll was brilliant. I mean, it let, was me, let me get comfortable. Let me get comfortable. <laughs> Spit your truth, man. Spit it. It was it was beautiful. I mean, it was brilliant. I mean, you had the guy set the back screen. Um, the back screen that got the other guy dives, and then the post man passes it to the guard, I think, and it's an easy layup for the game winner. I mean, it was brilliant. Oh, yeah, talk I mean, to me. I mean, it was brilliant. It was a br- I mean, it was a brilliant just to watch that. Actually, I was watching it live, and I actually played it back of the remote I have. I can actually and I actually replayed it back. I mean, it was a brilliant, brilliant play. Now the tournament success. Now I'll agree with you. If he can't do anything this year, because, I mean, get Kolek guy, the card. I mean, he's one of the top guards in the country. You know what I'm saying? I mean, when you have one of those type of guards, and even last year he had him and he had the, the guy that got – he has the long name, but he got drafted by the Mavericks. He was the long defensive guy. I forgot of his name, but he was pretty good too. I mean, he had – so he's had some talent to work with that Marquette. I'm not going to say he's just been been ripped of talent. But right. this year, if he can't make a deep run, at least – can he can he give me a sweet 16? If he can give me a yeah. sweet 16, okay. that at least shows me – that because Louisville has better resources than Marquette, of course. That at least shows hey, that, when you come to, that when you come to Louisville, you have these big resources. I've shown, I've seen what you did at Texas, and I've seen what you did at Marquette. Okay, you made a Sweet Sixteen, maybe you made a Sweet Sixteen, maybe you've been really good in the regular season. Um, you've been really good in the um, you know, in the you know conference tournaments here. You know these years. So let me see that, and then maybe we can talk about it. You know, but I feel like right now we're just in the wait and see. I mean. We could end up with we could end up with anybody. I mean, I, that's one thing I will say about Josh Hurd. He's just, he's playing this really really tight to the vest. Vince Tyrell, he was a he he chatted a lot. You know he you know he told me, and that's how I think we got a lot of you know we got a lot of information out of some people. But I feel like right. now with Josh Hurd, I mean he's I mean we don't know anything. It's just kind of just a way. Hey, nice. So let, let me ask you a question. So I really like the uh, what you use. Um, somebody's echoing. Somebody, that somebody got a phone on or something. Oh, there we go. I think it was it's, it's a nice as Mike. I got to mute about college. Josh asks. Um, so, um, looking using your metrics that you use for the coaches. So you use their. You looked at the X's and O's, and you talked about longevity and how do they handle adversity and how do they talk to the media. What would be your top five in order? Um, just so you know, we can hear from your perspective because I think you do bring a good X's and O's perspective to us. Top five coaching candidates. Make sure I'm just yep. five okay, coaching top five. Yep. What's okay. your list? Um, as of right now, now I'm just gonna be honest. You know, the tournament starts next Tuesday, so you know, as a, as a, you know, sometimes that that list could fluctuate. But as of right now, um, I'm gonna say my top five right now is obviously Scott Drew. I would say Scott Drew number one. Um, I don't have to really say much. I mean, you see what he's doing at Baylor. That's one. Um, two, Dusty May. Um, three. Will Wade, I mean, even though it seems like a long shot, but I'm in the same. He's 41. I mean, he's 41. I mean, he could, he could grow here. I see him at LSU, McNeese State. I mean, he could he could really thrive here. That's three. I would say um, Will Wade's definitely three. Um, four, I'm not going to lie. I really, really like Mick Cronin. I'm not, I'm not going to lie. I really like Mick Cronin. And then five, I like Eric Mosleman. And the only reason why I say Mick Cronin – and Eric Mosleman, for the most part, is because they bring the experience. See, what I try to do was, and I would say Shaka Smart on that six. He did that six right now because I, I need to see more. I just need to see more. I'm not saying that it's X's and O's. And, I mean, I've listened to him talk, so he seems very well spoken. But with Eric Mosleman and, and Mick Cronin, what I really like is they're experienced, and they will bring that that experience here. I mean, if you look at Eric Mosleman, what he did at Nevada, I mean, he built that program with the Caleb, I mean, the Caleb twins, of course. I remember them watching them there. Um, he, he built that program there, and then he went to Arkansas. And I know people, you know, give a lot of flack to Mick Cronin and, and uh, Mosleman for their the bad years. But we didn't have to do it. We have to take in a total body of work. We can't just say, oh, well, um, he struggled this year, but we just have to kick him to the curb. I mean, every coach has a bad year. Rick Pitino's had bad years. Hell, even – Bill Self, Kansas is not having a Kansas type of year this year. I mean, you know what I'm saying? I mean, I don't even think they're really a, 
from what I've seen, they're not a top three seed in my opinion. I mean, they're not. I mean, I, I, they're not. I mean, they just got waxed by Cincinnati the other night. So my point being is, I mean, every coach is going to have a down year, you know. So Eric Musselman had a down year. Mick Cronin had a down year. But I think, if I'm not mistaken, Eric Musselman's been to three elite, three straight elite eights before this year, or it was. I, I think it was something of that of that matter. And then of course, Mick Cronin, he's been to Final Four this week, 16. Of course, I know he hasn't been in Murray State and Cincinnati, but at least at UCLA, he's shown me at a blue blood program. You know, UCLA is a blue blood program historically. He's shown me that. He can he said he can succeed at a blue blood program, and if you look at his roster this year, he has like I think one junior. He has one junior and a lot of freshmen and sophomores. He doesn't really have experience like how he had with a Tiger Campbell, a Johnny Juzang, a Jane, a Hami Hawkins. You know, he didn't really he doesn't really have that. Dean Bone is a really really good player, but outside of that, they really have no offense. I mean, you know, Sebastian Mack, their freshman, he's pretty good, but I mean, he's still trying to develop and come into his own. And then Dylan Andrews, their other shooting guard, he's pretty good too, but he's still trying to come into his own, even as a sophomore. So there's really a really, really young, young team. So I would just say Mick Cronin and Eric Molson is the bottom four or five. I feel like they're now, yeah, of course, like I think it was, um, yeah, Patrick, um, nice to meet you. I've, I've been on here a few times, so I've yet to really see you, but I've seen Cal and everybody else. So nice to meet you. Yeah, you too, man. Uh, yeah, actually, I actually agree. Uh, actually, like, what you said too about how it's a it's a steep drop off. Of course, I know it's a steep drop off from Scott Drew to Dusty May. It's a, it's a complete drop off. I get that. Um, so you're just really looking at the the what ifs with Dusty May. I mean, I've seen what he can do. Maybe he can do it more at a complete level at a bigger program. You know what I'm saying? So I know it's a bigger drop off, but I just feel like Eric Mosman and Mick Cronin they bring those um ex they bring that experience. And Eric Mosman, I mean, he is a, I mean, I think that man lives on the NIL phone, uh, the NIL network, phone network, or whatever they have. Because, I mean, every time I see a transfer, it's always Arkansas reaching out. So, I mean, I, I mean, I know we yeah. – so, so, I think we could – I think our most – I mean, I know it could be prickly, and so can Mick Cronin. But, for example, I mean, I'm not saying, you know, I'm not trying to compare Jeff Brom to Mick Cronin but, or Jeff Walls to Mick Cronin, but I remember Jeff Walls, after the women's basketball game, they had lost, of course, I think – to Notre, yeah, it was to Notre Dame, and he was saying something to the fact about NIL, and obviously joking. He was like, well, if my players keep turning over the ball, I guess I'm going to have to start charging y'all 500 k every time y'all turn over the ball. He said something of that matter. Now, what I'm trying to say is he came off very abrupt and just very like, you know, I wouldn't say mean, but just as, you know, you know, he shows that fire. And I think that's all Mick Cronin does. He just shows his fire, and I feel like any anytime you're passionate at something, whether that's being a warehouse worker at UPS or – Wanting to be a, a basketball coach, I feel like that's something. If that's something you want to do, you're going to show your emotion, and that's one thing I'll compare Mick Cronin and Jeff Brom about. I feel like they Mick Cronin eats, sleeps, and breathes basketball. He wants to win at the <laughs> most extreme level. I mean, he does not care about nothing else but winning. And I just think that sometimes it comes off mean. Well, not really mean, but prickly because they're losing. If they were if they were winning, because guess what? I promise you, when they were making those final four runs, I didn't hear about Mick Cronin being mean or being this jackass oh, or sure. anything. So sure. I mean, you know, so that's best yeah, what yeah. I'm saying. That's we all. That's you. really all. Yeah, we got you, man. Hey. Um, Anais, thanks, man. Yeah, you made a lot of great points. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Thanks for coming on tonight, man. Seriously, thank no you, man. Talk to y'all guys soon. Hey, I appreciate it, man. Yeah. Thank you. And Nick said, "Clean quarters up, Anais." As you're exiting, <laughs> yeah. it was like in your thread. So. All yeah. right, so he so he made some good points. Um, Muss and Mick, they are certainly successful coaches, and I think I think it is hard to for a program that's been beaten down for years that's normally successful. I think it's very hard to then bring a guy in who's older and who even if he's had a bunch of successful seasons, I I can agree with him that you don't ever want to base it off of one season, but like using Bill Self, for example, Bill Self's still going to make the tournament. Rick Pitino having down years. I feel like the worst Rick Pitino teams I saw were like 18 and 13 or 19 and 12 or something and made the NIT. And yeah. I just think like Musselman's issue for me is – Nobody likes – it seems like nobody gets along with him very long. If you look in the portal today, he's got a bunch of dudes entering a portal that he brought in from the portal, mm -hmm. and he's got a bunch of academic issues. Like, Arkansas has a lot of academic casualties. I do I do agree with him on Mick Cronin to an extent. I do too. If, if the buyout is negotiable or navigable, whether it's to be a lower amount, 
uh, or whether it's that you can just get it completely waived. I mean, I'm not saying he can. I'm just saying it, those are possibilities. He's definitely a higher up candidate than I think the fan base gives him credit for. But no, do I think we should drop 16 to 20 million on him? I don't. Yeah. Google Go Card says, great pod tonight, Anais, and special guest Ty Kyle, Josh <laughs> Patrick. Anais, bro, when he comes in, he brings the heat, man. He brings um, the heat. No, he, he, he made a lot of great points. And um, that was something you talk about Dusty May and like the, you know, you looked up the, the film and stuff like that. That's something that yeah. I kind of did too. And, um, we're not going to show it today. I've, I've had conversations with this, with, uh, Chris Oliver on Twitter who runs the, uh, basketball immersion YouTube channel. Um, if y'all are ever looking for anything like deep dives into, uh, you know, tactics and schemes and plays and things of that nature, he's, he's a must follow. And he's got a lot of stuff on dusty may that, um, you know, if we talk dusty in the future, or if, if he is the higher, we're going to, we're going to use a lot of his stuff. Cause he, he has a lot of good well break down you know videos of uh plays that work and stuff so and i just brought up a lot of good points a lot of good points yeah, yep. yeah and i think you know I'm not sure why mick would only be a five-year fix at the age of 53 but i don't know yeah mick would be if mick is successful here he'd be here for be 18 20 10 to 15 years probably i mean at least yeah um no i think i, I do like anias's uh his analysis on, on Dusty May. Cause Dusty May is obviously a guy who has talked about a lot. We haven't gone too, too deep into Dusty May. Um, I think we talk about him a lot, but we haven't really gone into what he's done probably because it, it, it's a There's limited. Just so many candidates. Like, I know yeah, well, and it's a limited resume, but Dusty May is from a, especially from an offensive standpoint, his defense is, questionable when you look at the efficiency rankings yeah. but from an offensive standpoint man he's he's a, a x's and o's i don't, I don't like to use the word genius but but he's very proficient yeah. with his with his offensive style it, it's fun to watch i can't it's kind of a, a, another shaka um similarity um they have fun high-paced uh offenses although shock is more yeah. of a defensive guy yeah but yeah he he knows how to coach an offense he he does seem to have that personality um that would fit in here obviously there's there's less having to get out into the community and do things at an fau than you would here so that's yet to be determined but the fit could be there my thing with him is the and I think I said this Wednesday where when we were on but the amount of space in between the best case scenario and the worst case scenario is humongous compared to most of these other coaches that would be on his level or his tier in a coaching search he could be the next Jay Wright or he could be the next Archie Miller, you know? Mm -hmm. So, and then there's a lot of room in between there. So <clears throat> there's a lot of unknowns with a guy like Dusty May, just because, I mean, he's been a head coach for what, five years now. Um, so a guy that could be great or a guy that could flame out, um, but he's probably a guy you don't want to miss on if you have the opportunity to hire him because he's young and, and he's got that potential to be a, you know, extremely successful coach. Yeah, for sure. Um, I just want to hit really quick, Ty, um, Eric Musselman and, um, and Mick Cronin, just since Ad uh, Anias brought them up. Um, Muscleman, I've kind of crossed off the list. He was a hot name initially, and then we haven't really heard much with him. And I think our Arkansas guy in our Discord, I mean, even he's saying he's not hearing as much, so I just have kind of crossed him off the list um, and don't really consider him as much of a candidate. And then Mick Cronin, um, I've heard this so often, and I just have had to address this, like about this contract loophole. Um, I had an attorney, I won't tell you who, uh, <laughs> review his contract in depth, 
and actually had another attorney re-review it as well. And I'm not sure what loophole that they're talking about. Uh, I've also heard rumors that there might be an unreleased part of his contract that we don't have, uh, we're not able to view publicly um, that has some type of a loophole. I'm not seeing it. I haven't heard anything about what that would be. Um, I've also heard the argument of maybe there's some local laws in California that um, would allow uh, a loophole for the contract. And I can tell you that's not the case. It's a long, it's a long shot. It's, it's not anything that's going to happen. So just to touch on briefly both of those candidates, I don't really think either one is probably going to be considered for the job. Yeah. Um, did want to say real quick, I'm going to throw out the link one more time just in case somebody wants to join us and share their thoughts. Yeah, we probably got time for maybe one more caller. We'll give it a few more minutes to see if anybody wants to jump in. Um, if not, then we'll probably wrap it up. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, no, I, the, the Cronin takes, I, I agree. Now, I will say, I saw, where's that comment? Uh, JK says, I'll take Scott True, brother, at GCU. I don't no. know, guys. I, I, on, see a, I see a lot of Mick hate. And listen, I'm not going to sit here and tell you that Mick is my top choice. He's not. But I, I don't I don't understand. I don't understand where the Mick Cronin hate stems from. Like, is it just because of this season? Like, if you like my question to the people that don't want Mick, if you if this season did not count, like you were not we didn't have this season. We didn't play games. Would you still say this about Mick? I don't quite get it. I, I don't think he's an elite coach, but I don't think he's bad. And I think he would win here. I th really do. I think he would win. I uh, I think the issue with Mick is that there were, you know, last time his name circulated when Kenny Payne got the job. He should have got it last time, man. And I, I actually agree because he was the only other name of anybody that we heard of interest. And, and yeah. for me, if it was between those two, I don't understand why we didn't. But a lot of people didn't like it then. And I think – I think his personality just rubs people the wrong way and that they were looking for any reason to justify that. And when he was winning, you, you had to just say, well, yeah, he's a good coach. And even if you really, but the second he started losing the second, he had a bad year, people could jump on it and say, see, look how he acts. And I mean, I'll admit I've been on that train. Like I did not like the way he handled the beginning of the year at all. And I do think at a school like Louisville, you're, you're, if you're acting like that at UCLA, when I mean, let's just be honest, they don't really care much about basketball, even though they're a blue blood school. Their their population does not really prioritize college basketball. They're they're a pro town, among other things there are to do. Louisville, there's not a whole lot to do, and we don't have any pro teams. So guess what? We're obsessed with basketball. I do think that could be a potential issue, but I, like this whole idea that he's a terrible coach, it's just not true. I actually think at the very worst, I think we'd be back in the tournament almost every year. Would he be able to make runs like he did at UCLA or would it look more like Cincinnati? Honestly, my guess is it'd be somewhere in between that. But he's not as bad of a can as people think, but he's not worth 16 and $20 million. Hardly anybody no. is. That's my biggest issue with Mick Cronin. He's not worth that money. Yeah, that's, that's fair. That's fair. And I think the last comment we're going to pull up is Doom fan says, if things are good, they're good. If things are bad, then he's another whiny ball guy. I, I could, I get it. I could see it. it. Makes sense. Mick, Mick is a little whiny. I just, I, I just see so much anti Cronin messages on everywhere from, from our show to, you know, I've tuned into power 10 and, you know, a lot of power 10 viewers don't, don't want Cronin. It's just like, man, I don't, you could do way, way worse. Than but they are Wade Brigade through and through. Almost, well, I don't think there's a single one of them that goes on there, and, and I, I like that. So I, I, I would, I, I've said before, I, I think Wade's like my number three. So yeah, I, I don't have a problem with that. But I just, there's so much Mick hate, and I'm just like, man, I think he'd be good here. I really do. Yeah, I'm with you. I think he'd be all right. But. We'll probably start wrapping up here, guys. Um, we're going to give final thoughts here in just a second. Last thing I'm just going to say again, um, for those that missed it, we have our first annual bracket challenge. I'm going to go ahead and send the link one more time. Uh, we're going to also post this on Twitter as well. I'll put up a tweet here shortly. 
uh, but you can join via that link. It's going to ESPN. Um, use code TTBP to join the bracket group. This TTBP. Uh, we're going to give out gift cards for the first, second, and third place winner. Uh, first place is going to get $50, uh, $25, and so on. You Now, the one caveat, you have to be subscribed to the YouTube channel to claim your winnings. You can play if you can play long if you're not, but to, to claim the winnings, you got to be subscribed. So uh, make sure you guys like and subscribe if you like what you're hearing. Um, like I said, we're pushing to 1,000 subs. I never thought a day would come where we would say even that, but we are, and um, we're growing and we're trying to get there. And um, we, I think this is going to be a fun, a fun interactive thing to do with viewers and and to really kind of drive that drive that narrative home of you know like and subscribe and and all the good stuff. So I'll wrap it up here and let you guys say your final thoughts. Patrick, you want to go first? Yeah, no, yeah, definitely uh, get on that. Um third banner pod bracket challenge um should be fun hopefully we get a good group in there can get it competitive and then kind of to relate to that hopefully next year we're sitting here around this time yes Yes. talking about the havoc offense no no (laughs) shaka smart maybe as long as as long as as long as we're talking about louisville's seating in the tournament and uh you know having a post bracket reveal Thanks, breakdown or so. maybe even something live um i'm looking forward to that i'm looking forward to better days this coaching search is both fun and stressful at the same time um as i've said wednesday you know we're here with you guys all the way um we're going to continue to talk about it any news that pops up or we're, we're going to analyze it um and yeah you know let's get a good coach and, and let's get back to the promised land jock mm-hmm. is on a barn burner right now up three against providence kim english is a good coach i like him english a he lot good. i like him english <laughs> a lot what if he loses tonight to shaka i don't like him a lot i'm just kidding, <laughs> just kidding. go ahead josh continue yeah no i was just gonna say thank you guys all for tuning in um, like I said, I've been dealing with some personal stuff, so it's been awesome to be back here with you guys. Um, you know, I know we bantered a little bit, but that's all in good fun. You know, like I said, we do that all day in the Discord. Um, that's just kind of our personalities. Uh, you know, we feel strongly uh, about our opinions. Um, but mm-hmm. thank you guys all for tuning in and subscribing. Um, I think we're going to have to be patient with this coaching search. And There's I'm not, not patient. A lot of coming out, and I think. You know, we're just going to have to ride the wave. I think us as Louisville fans, we've been through enough. We should be able to handle something like this, right? So just bear with us and just put faith in Josh Hurd that he pulls in the right guy. Uh, My last thoughts are, you know, I'm nervous. I'm nervous because we're hearing the one name. It's a huge name. It's a long shot. We'll see. If the the numbers are true that we're offering, I mean – it's gonna be. T- it's not an easy answer, but here's what I'll end it with. Actually, on Scott Drew, I think, and I could be completely wrong, but I cannot imagine they would want this to run into the NCAA tournament. This noise, if he's definitely going to stay at Baylor, I would think after they're out of the tournament, whenever that is, whether it's tonight, I don't know what they're doing against Iowa State right now, or whether it's, you know, even if they win the Big Twelve championship, whatever happens with Baylor, you would think between selection Sunday at the to Thursday or whenever they play at the latest, you think if, if he's definitely staying at Baylor, you think you would start hearing about the leverage he's gained. Somebody is going to release a story saying Scott Drew is definitely staying at Baylor or he signs an extension, something. Surely they're not just going to just pretend this isn't a thing going into the tournament. I just cannot imagine that. So what we should know something, I think, by the end of next week. And if we don't, I would take that as a good sign. Mm-hmm. For sure. Yeah. That's all I got. Well, hey, it was a good episode. Thank you for everyone that tuned in. Um, seriously, we thank all of you guys for tuning in and giving us the support. Like I said, like and subscribe. Um, check out the Bracket Challenge. Uh, make sure you subscribe so you can claim the winnings if you do happen to win. 
And uh, my last thing is we're going to say, Josh, it was awesome to have you back. I hope we can do more episodes together, man. So, sure, man. Welcome back, That's, Josh. Welcome back, and I'm glad that you're doing much better. So we'll end it with that. And uh, as Ross would say, go Cards, go Krogering. Go Cards. <laughs>